Ladies and gentlemen, a new narrative is rolling out right now, one which describes a new crisis, a crisis which dwarfs in terms of societal and economic impacts COVID-19. COVID-19, for which we shut down the entire economy and locked people in their homes. What could possibly be more socially and economically impactful than that? Let's talk about it. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer broadcast. I believe that there will be another crisis. Uh, it will be more significant. And, you know, we need to actually start preparing for that now. When we do see this next crisis, it will be faster than what we've seen with COVID. Uh, the exponential growth rate will climb, uh, be much steeper. Uh, the impact will be greater. And as a result, the economic and social uh, implications will be even more significant. Even more significant. What is this next crisis that we just heard Jeremy Jurgens, Harvard-educated managing director of the World Economic Forum, describing? Well, now let's hear from Klaus Schwab himself. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack to use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. Yes, a cyber pandemic. And before we even talk about what that is, I just want to again appreciate that we just heard two leaders of the World Economic Forum promise that we are going to have a new crisis soon that dwarfs COVID, which has already spelled the end of the world as we know it. So this is something severe, and we need to take notice. This is much bigger than the Project for a New American Century, anticipating a, uh, a new Pearl Harbor, or the Event 201 expecting a pandemic, or even the food chain reaction game describing the food shortages we're seeing now after a pandemic. Each of these events involved lots of multinational companies coming together for a tabletop exercise, outlining the changes they wished to implement anyway, their agenda. And then, when these crises occur, seizing the opportunity to execute on those agendas. That's exactly what's happening here. So the whole premise here, you can see, look, it's the same language template even. Quote, like the pandemic, cybercrime does not respect borders or ideologies. No one organization can fight it alone. That's the exact copy as from the food chain reaction game. Um, because global problems require global solutions. And that's where these globalists walk in with their altruistic sounding philanthropic objectives and then execute on their agendas. So the whole premise here for why 2020 is now a cyber security, you know, what's, why is this all of a sudden happening is because due to COVID, people are forced to work from home. And these people, you know, there's an increased security surface. People don't understand security practices. They're writing down passwords on sticky notes and who knows. And so as a result, everyone is much more vulnerable in 2020. Now, this is true to some extent, but when you look at the players that were coming together for the 2020 Cyber Polygon event, Again, it's just like Event 201 and the Food Chain Reaction Game. It's a tabletop exercise describing how organizations can re react to this new uh, cybercrime-rich environment of the 2020s, of this new normal. One of the chief people involved in this whole um, cyber polygon effort was Salesforce. Here is their chief trust officer describing how we really need to take cybersecurity differently in the new normal. Here's a report from Accenture doing the same thing. The Threatscape report from Accenture talks about in the 2020s, no one could have anticipated what's going on. We have unprecedented circumstances opening the door to innovative cybercrime. 
Accenture is a huge consulting company, and they're one of the main proponents, uh, participants of this Cyber Polygon event. Let's look at the others. See if you detect a pattern here. AIG, Bank of America, Credit Suisse, Equifax, the credit rating agency, JPM Morgan Chase, MasterCard, PayPal, Swift, the International Transactions Clearing Network, UBS, Zurich Insurance Group, a lot of finance and bank players and insurance players there. Also some tech companies like Palo Alto Networks and Salesforce, Amazon Web Services, China Southern Power Grid, Cisco, Cloudflare, HP, uh, Hitachi, Huawei, IBM, Microsoft, Palantir, a surveillance company straight out of CIA funding, PayPal, um, and then of course BlackRock is in there as well, Deep State Finance uh, Central. So you see we have representatives from a few different areas here, but it seems as if the cyber crime that's being discussed here definitely is finance heavy. And if we're talking, especially the SWIFT network, if we're talking about threats to international transactions, clearings, um, that affects all transactions, all financial transactions right now. And so when we hear the rhetoric from Klausi and Jeremy about this is going to be a crisis which dwarfs everything else, it happens ridiculously quickly, and the impacts are off the scale, everyone is affected, and then Klaus goes on to say the power grid goes down, and the banking institutions are all involved. We can see here, banking will be affected. Now, I don't want to get too far into high-octane speculation, but between the rhetoric and the participants, I think it's fair to say there is an event scripted in the near future to take down one or both the power grid and the finance. President Trump already passed in 2017 Executive Order 13800, which sought to harden the, uh, our infrastructure, especially critical infrastructure like the power grid, against cyber attacks, almost as if they have some insight into a potential threat along this vector. And then certainly throughout this last nine months of the pandemic, and it's, it's not just the World Economic Forum that's talking about this. We have been pummeled with predictive programming through the media about the threats to our power grid particularly. Take a look. Even most recently from the New York Times, it is the same Russians who hacked the election that are now targeting the power grid and our nuclear plants. Uh, you can't. I'm just going to let that sit there. I don't think you can make this up at this point. The propaganda is so thick and dense, they're weaving their Russian hacker story right along into this cybersecurity and power grid story. But again, look at, look at the, the, the uh, tapestry that has been woven over these last few months. Hackers are targeting the remote workers who keep your lights on. As I said, now that they're having to work remotely and write down passwords willy-nilly, uh, hackers can target them, and this includes utility companies, cybersecurity, more important than ever due to COVID-19. This was in May, as time goes on. This is from the World Economic Forum. Why COVID-19 is making utilities more vulnerable to cyber attacks and what we can do about it. This is back in April. Again, they've been laying the framework, creating that foundation and, and uh, establishing the predictive programming. From the Hill in August, officials warn of increasing cyber threats to our critical infrastructure during the pandemic, notably the power grid. Moving on in September, whether facing a cyber attack or a pandemic, preparation is critical. And we're going to explain why cybersecurity is critical for the utility industry now in the era, the new normal of COVID-19. Even most recently, just at the end of October, Cybersecurity is going to be a crucial priority in utility companies' agenda as threats continue to grow amid COVID-19. And then just last week, the U.S. power sector has prevented millions of cyber attacks in 2020, which takes 24-7 commitment. Now they're giving you the sense that these attacks are already happening, that it's constantly happening, and it's only by virtue we're hanging by a thread at any moment. This team of incredibly talented people might, they might actually fail, and then we'd be going back to the Stone Age for some amount of time. So I just wanted to mention that the media has been planting this seed as well. 
And you need to be aware of this, and we need to be discussing this, trying to keep it from happening by virtue of spreading the word about it, if at all possible. But certainly we need to be bracing for it and understanding exactly who the players are behind it and that this is absolutely a critical part of the larger Great Reset agenda that the World Economic Forum is out there pushing right now. There's a reason Klaus Schwab is running this event, talking about cybersecurity in 2020 suddenly being a new risk to you. And I will leave it here for tonight because there's so much more to unpack that I, I couldn't possibly do it justice. So let's open the conversation today and I rely on you to help me look more deeply into this, to help me spread the word. Those of you who are better credentialed, better spoken uh, than I, let's, let's talk about this. This is an important conversation. Thanks for watching, folks. If you want to find this report and all my reports, they are at icehfarmer.com. If you value this broadcast and the information I'm sharing, please help me keep it running. You can find a few different ways of doing that at iceagefarmer.com slash support. Thanks for watching, folks. Strengthen your cybersecurity practices and keep growing lots of abundant food and raising awesome animals and spread the word. Thanks, folks, and be well. So does that mean that there will definitely be our next crisis and when it happens, we'll think about the crisis in 2020. So next crisis is inevitable, according to your logic. Is it so? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in the camp. I believe that there will be another crisis. Uh, it will be more significant. And, you know, we need to actually start preparing for that now. And, you know, if we take the example of what happened with medical equipment in the European Union, um, you know, we've been working on the European project for decades now. Yet when a really significant crisis uh, took place, the channels of communication were not in place, uh, the protocols for uh, cooperation were not in place, and people looked inward uh, initially and tried to address it on their own. And you know, with time now, it's opened back up because the different countries realize that they're not in a position to address it on their own. Even if we look at something as important as vaccine research, uh, this is going to require a global effort uh, from the scientists, from the production of the vaccines, to the dissemination. And, you know, what we can do in cybersecurity is make sure that we don't try and rebuild after the attacks already happened, but put those uh, cooperation mechanisms in place already. We're working on this here at the World Economic Forum through our Global Cybersecurity Center. Uh, we're working with Spurbank, BI Zones, other institutions as well. So we need to actually start this cooperation and understanding early so that when the crisis does hit, that we're in a position uh, to respond effectively to it. And, you know, I would anticipate that when we do see this next crisis, it will be faster than what we've seen with COVID. Uh, the exponential growth rate will climb, uh, be much steeper. Uh, the impact will be greater. And as a result, the economic and social uh, implications will be even more significant. So I think it's really important that we don't underestimate uh, the severity of what a crisis like this, uh, the impact it could have. And it's going to take us, you know, all, all sectors of society and the economy to come together to address that.